Purcell. Mm -hmm. If you ever loved me. Of course I loved you. I'm gonna be mama to all your baby cubs. <sighs> of which there will be many. <sighs> Jason, when we last saw him, he was being uh, bitten and scraped by Felton and Crystal in their panther form. There's a much bigger plan afoot for him than he's aware of. In fact, he's been chosen to be the person to bring their race back into being. What exactly am I gonna do? And once you turn, we get to be together forever. What's a turn? They think that this will turn him into one of them and therefore he will be able to bring fresh genetic material into their bloodline because they're so inbred that they're, as a race of werepanthers, they're dying off. Kind of gets his comeuppance here. The thing that he's most been proud of becomes the thing that most possibly could endanger him. It's kind of interesting to see the kind of guy who really gets his sense of worth from his sexual prowess to all of a sudden be kind of objectified and sort of used against his will. Hey there, Sookie. It's a big revelation to Sookie that Alcide is back with Debbie, and I don't think she likes it. You tried to kill me. Yep. I did. Well, I didn't recognize her when she walked on set. <laughs> she, I was used to her as the uh, kind of V-addicted, strung out um, motorcycle gal, and she's in a baby blue sweater uh, all done up. And, uh, you know, she's probably gone a little too extreme to the other side, as I think most people in recovery sometimes do. So, I guess I should have told you me and Debbie was back together when you called this morning. But honestly, I was afraid you wouldn't come. Alcide, I'm happy for you. Debbie looks really good, really healthy. I hope she can keep with it. Lord knows, stranger things have happened. Of course, you know, given everything that Sookie's been through, I don't think she's thinking in terms of romance right now. But you sense the longing between Alcide and Sookie still, um, that something there is still unresolved. Even though it's platonic, it borders on the possibility of being more than that. I am not your dinner. What'd you do that for? In this episode, Eric has lost his memory. There's a, a wonderful boyish innocence in how he plays his lost don't sip on the rug. And uh, he's still a vampire, though. So there's a certain sense of danger in the way that a kind of uh, a young boy can be dangerous, at, uh, like pulling the wings off of a small bug. There's still violence there, inherent in the, his vampire nature. But he doesn't quite know the power that he really holds in his hands. <laughs> it, it tickles. It's great to see this vulnerability of him that uh, everyone, including Sookie, is very surprised to find out about. Now, he literally depends on her almost like an infant depends on its mother. Come on. It's really fun for Alex, I think, because he's this six, four, you know, hulking guy. And then all of a sudden, he's playing kind of like this frightened child. And I think it's something he doesn't get asked to do a lot. He's such a great actor, and he's so well adjusted about um, his craft that he just sees it as, I think he just, he just embraced it as, this is gonna be really fun. I'm just gonna throw myself into it. But I also get a sense from him that you're not quite sure if he, uh, if he's really, truly at a loss, or is he actually have a bigger scheme up his sleeve? We'll have to wait and see. You just killed my fairy godmother!